Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are in the month of November. I know the Spirit of God have told us that this month He is sitting to judge our affairs. Now, because of that, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts with you concerning judgment and how God thinks where judgment is concerned. But before we go into today's broadcast, as the Lord have instructed us, can we call forth our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I demand and I receive right now our daily bread. Thank you, Lord. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, like I told you earlier, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts with you about judgment. Now, most times when people hear the word judgment, they get terrified because they think judgment equals condemnation. See? But you know, judgment simply means looking into a particular matter and taking decision which is supposed to be based on truth. See that now? Now, the fact that, you know, like the popular saying, it's not the person that takes the matter or that reports the matter that wins the case. You know, people say those things. Now, judgment does not equal condemnation. Judgment does not equal condemnation. Take note of that. So when, 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 when someone says, God will judge you, it may even be good for you, praise God. Yes, it may be good for you. You know, I, I think I shared this with you some time back. The woman that was caught in the act of adultery, you know, they brought her to Jesus. And Jesus, the Bible said when they got to him, he was writing on the floor. And they say, hey, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And according to the law of Moses, she is supposed to be stoned to death. But what do you say? So they brought the matter to Jesus so he can judge. Now, according to them, they have their facts that this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Then they brought the matter to Jesus to judge. Now, what they didn't know was that Jesus is a righteous judge. And he is not going to judge the matter the way he heard it. He's going to judge the matter based on truth and from God's perspective. Because Jesus had made up his mind to obey the instruction that his father gave to him. You find that in John chapter 12, verse, I think verse 49 to 50. Jesus said, I'll only say the, what the Father has commanded me to say. And I only speak what the Father has commanded me to speak. Now, they brought this woman to Jesus. And all Jesus had to do was to ask the Father, what's your mind concerning this? And the Father who sees all things said to him, throw this question to them. And, and, and he told them, anyone without you, anyone without sin, should cast the first stone. And you know the story, they all walked away. Now the interesting part was this. Jesus looked at that woman and said, Woman, where are your accusers? Has no one been able to condemn you? Now take note, he says, Has no one be, where are your accusers? Has no one been able to condemn you? She said, no one. And then Jesus, now remember he said, Any one of you without sin should cast the first stone. And so they all left. And Jesus now said, where are your accusers? They've all gone. And then Jesus now, he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Ah, was Jesus who trying to say, even me, I'm not qualified to condemn you because there's sin in my life. Because the, 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 what he threw at them is anyone without sin should cast the first stone. No. Jesus wasn't saying, I don't qualify. Because me too, I have sin. And I say, and you know, maybe because he was born in the flesh, you know, the Bible says, in sin did my mother conceive me. So maybe that's what he was referring to. Because 
because we all believe Jesus never could never have sinned. Okay? But was that the reason? He told the woman, neither do I condemn you. Then he made a very powerful statement to her. He said, go and sin no more. So Jesus acknowledged that she sinned. But then he said, I don't condemn you either. Now, why did Jesus say that? Now, you see, as God's children, we have been given the Holy Spirit to help us. And one of the things Jesus said he would do is that he would teach us all things. And guess what? The Bible was written according to the scriptures. It was written for our learning. What does that tell you? Every story you read in the Bible is for your learning. Now, having materials for learning is one thing. Having a teacher to teach you is another. You may have all the materials for learning and you read them, you still don't get it until you get a teacher that can explain those things to you. It is a teacher that will now connect this to this and tell you this is how it works. Oh, do you know I've been reading this thing but I just didn't understand how it works. Yeah, now I get it. Why? Because there was an interpreter, because there was a teacher. You remember the utopian eunuch? When God told Philip, go and join yourself to this chariot, he got there and met the guy reading. He was reading from the book of Isaiah. He was reading from the book of Isaiah 53. And he was just reading it and going. And, and Philip said to him, hey, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy said, how will I understand? Except someone interprets it for me. Now, that's not because it wasn't written in his language. He was already reading it. Re sorry, he was already reading it. See that now? So he said, but I need someone to interpret this thing for me. See that? So the Bible has been given to us for our learning. Every story in the Bible is to bring us to the place of learning. But then we also have been given a teacher. Jesus said before he left, now listen, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He said, I will pray the Father, and the Father will give you another comforter. Now, one of the things Jesus said the comforter is going to do is that he will teach you all things. That means Jesus recognizes the fact that we need to be taught. The materials for this teaching has been given to us by all the stories that they put together in the Bible. I told you, the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it, and how they ended with it. So here is this situation brought before Jesus, and we see this play out. We read this whole thing play out, and then we, we don't understand, okay, why why did Jesus just tell her, I had that problem, I won't lie to you, praise God. I, I was like, Lord, Lord, this is not, I don't think this is right, you know. Now you're feeling like, you know, I don't think this is right. How would you just tell a woman that was caught in the act of adultery to go and sin no more? Did you really save her? Or, or maybe because Jesus wasn't dead yet, so he, it's not time for him to save anybody. But at least he should have taken her, sit down, let me talk to you. Why would you do this? You know, you know, you know, you know like you would do. This is shameful. Now see the shame you have brought on yourself. See the shame you've brought on your husband. So why, why did Jesus just say, go and sin no more? Now, that became a puzzle for me. So what did I do? I take it to the teacher. Who's my teacher? The Holy Spirit has been given to every one of us as God's children to be our teacher. But how well are you receiving truth or are you being taught by him? So I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I have a problem with this. Why would Jesus just dismiss this woman ordinarily like that and say, go and sin no more? How will he guarantee that she would not sin? Or is it that we shouldn't care? We shouldn't care in such situations what people do afterwards. It's just that, okay, it came to me, I, I choose not to condemn you. So just go and sin no more. And then the Lord began to open my understanding and speak to me concerning this. 
And the Lord told me, no. He said, what you don't know is that Jesus saw more than what was presented. And that's when the Lord told me, oh, this is, this is beautiful. And, and let me tell you this truth. When you are thought of the Lord, you've got to believe him. Now, we, we don't coin this thing up. We don't sit down. We, I, I don't think our minds are that intelligent to figure these things out. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, we, we are not. Because now, your, your intelligence, hear me, your brain or your intelligence only plays with information that is available putting them together and coming to a conclusion. That's what your brain can do. But then, when an information beyond the ordinary is now given to you, what's going on? It's not just your brain that is working. There is an external being talking to you, an external being teaching you. Now, that's just how you know that this thing is beyond you. See that now? So, and then the Lord shared this with me. He said, listen, Jesus knew that that woman was set up for that act of adultery. By who? By her husband and those men that caught her. He, the husband was looking for a reason to do away with her. That's what, what was going on. And so he, he planned with, all, with, with those men and then he set the woman up. You know, of course, those things should have taken them a long time to plan it. They set her up and then she somehow fell for it. But then she didn't commit that adultery willingly. You understand what I'm saying? Now, she wasn't raped. I'm not saying she was raped. But what I'm saying is, you know, she was manipulated into that situation. Because the husband was looking for an opportunity to do away with her. So they planned that whole thing up and then when they got it now, they felt they would take her to one righteous man, Jesus. And by that also they would trap Jesus. See that? So she did commit the act of adultery. She did. But then Jesus, now I remember I'm talking to you about judgment. I'm trying to bring to you how God judges things. So Jesus looked at the situation and he didn't follow their words. said, woman, how, how come you committed adultery? How could you have done this? Now, what do you want me to do? You see, my hands are tied. The law of Moses is already there. If I plead with them, how many more people will I have to plead with? So woman, the only thing I can do for you is to pray that your soul will be received in heaven. But for this stoning, I have no power or control over them. But Jesus said no. With boldness, he looked at them and says, any one of you without sin should cast the first stone. Because he knew their hearts. See that now? He knew their mind. He knew what they were up to. Because he sees what men don't see. Now that's how Jesus brought judgment into that situation and the woman was free praise god yes the woman was free now imagine when they were taking that woman to jesus if she had heard about jesus now you notice she didn't even cry to jesus she didn't say oh master help me these people may want to kill me no because she she felt she was guilty but jesus who knew and understood all things delivered her from their hands and then he made that statement, neither do I condemn you. Why did he say that? Because truly, from heaven's perspective, it was not her fault. How can you say it was not her fault? She wasn't raped. At least at some point, she must have agreed to it. Yeah, you see, God doesn't judge out of the appearance. The Bible says he judges the thoughts and the intent of the hearts. He judges. So he knows when people do things willingly. And he knows when people do things against their will. He knows. And he sees what push. Now, this particular situation, you can see deception painted all over it. And Jesus gave the smartest judgment. 
He says, I don't condemn you. Now, those guys knew that even when they leave that place, he, you know, you know, they, they just knew that Jesus had busted their plans. So they all walked away. And the woman went back like an innocent woman. Praise God. He, said, he, he just said, go and sin no more. So don't do it again. And that's God's judgment for you. Praise God. That's how God judges. So when you hear God wants to judge, except you are a willing tool in his hands. That means you, you, you willingly participated in the evil. See that now? Other than that, you are not supposed to be afraid of God's judgment. Why? Because when he comes to judge, he's going to judge based on truth. Our time is up for today, but hear me. When God says he's coming to judge, now if there is anything you've done wrong, be quick to repent. Ask for forgiveness. He's a loving God. He's ready to forgive. And most importantly, he's ready to apportion your part of his, in, of his inheritance that he has given for you. Praise God. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, have the best day ever. God bless you. Bye-bye.